the recording. Yo. So for those who don't know me, I bet you all do. Uh, my name is uh, Francis Benoit, you can call me Alito. And I started this little thing called Bibonaje. Uh, so the main goal of Bibonaje is to get people to reconnect with nature. And that will be a main theme you'll see throughout these webinars and the teachings I will do. Uh, oh, yeah. So more people are joining in. Um, so, yeah. We'll start with a little introduction to my background and movement and why I did a bit of this forest climbing thing. So, as a young age, uh, my parents used to take me to the forest. And we uh, had a little camp there, but I'd spend a lot of my time uh, moving around the forest and spending time climbing trees and relaxing in the trees. So that was quite a blast. But uh, when I, I started to become a teenager, I didn't do much of that anymore. Uh, and uh, started to lose that connection. I went to university and uh, to college. So that was a little bit harder to get to the forest. And uh, when I came back though, I got back to it. Uh, started calisthenics with uh, my friend Brandon. And so yeah, I found this tree in my backyard that would work quite well for doing pull-ups and things like that. And that put me back into this tree climbing thing, slowly transitioned to being more of a gymnastic type exercise and uh, mobility, things like that. So yeah, maybe I'll show you the tree real quick. Um, it's a white poplar. You can see it right from my window. Uh, and as you can see, the branches are well spaced out and it's a good tree for starting out such exercises. Uh, so yeah, I didn't find a tree like this one. It's optimal, uh, but you know, pine trees will do, uh, or conifers. They tend to be sticky though when the branches are more crowded, but uh, they're great for mobility. Um, so yeah, so I started moving around in the, in the trees and you know, practicing some harder stuff to increase my body weight mobility. And uh, I learned about this gymnastics course uh, through Brendan again. Uh, so we did a bit of that for a year or two. And I've also gotten into Edo Port Health style training uh, that invokes a lot of mobility and things like that. And I tried to combine all that and do a course uh, about tree climbing. So we'll start with some basic things. And uh, I think the basis of any exercise or fitness thing you should do to have fun. If you're not having fun through your fitness exercise, then find something else. Um, and I like trees because it brings you back through that little explorer mindset that childs often have, and we sometimes forget to get into that mind as a, an adult. So that's one of the reasons I push through climbing a lot but there's also many other reasons I'll go through with this webinar. Um, but we'll focus on that a bit. So the importance of playing, of course, tree climbing is not the only thing you need to, uh, the thing you can do for as a play, but yeah, let me check out. Uh, how many of you have some sort of game or um, something that you could call it a play that you do every day? Um, so just by show of hands, who plays every day? Dan, that's good. All right, so here's a couple of reasons why you should be playing every day. Number one, of course, it's fun, but also playing increases your, your brain development. So you're seeing new things, trying out things that are new. Uh, even like if you're playing chess, uh, so your brain always tries to improve that increases your serotonin and your um, capability to produce some new brain activity so that's a 
a good uh, reason to play. But also, it's just more fun, right? And the things you can do to play, there's such a wide area of things. You can play while, wa while washing dishes. Um, I used to work at this little cafe, and uh, what I would do is wash dishes, right? But I'd make it a game. So I could work really fast, have a lot of fun. And uh, how I'd make it a game is just to give myself little challenges. Um, see how many plates I can stack. Uh, fit the plates in the tray as a puzzle and uh, maybe see how fast I can do it. Things like that. So give yourself little challenges and uh, maybe that's will, that will be the first things. I'll give you three challenges throughout the course. Number one uh, will be to turn uh, a regular activity that you might find boring into a game. So I'd like you guys to do that and uh, maybe when you've found it, done it a couple of times, uh, send me a message telling me what you did and uh, how it changed. Number two, uh, we're gonna go a bit more into uh, exploring the flow state. So, uh, well, first, do you have any questions so far about the webinar? Good. All right. So, number two, we'll go into flow states. So, uh, do you guys experience something that you could call a flow state uh, or have any exercises that bring you to a flow state? And uh, maybe if one of you would like to share it. No one? All right, well, I'll describe mine. Um, so to me, a flow state is a state where things happen and you don't have to think about it. So for example, you're, it's often related to movement. Uh, so let's say I'm playing with this ball, right? So I'll do this, but I won't think like, oh, I need to put my hand there. Or now that I've caught the ball, where do I throw it? The mind doesn't put its uh, barriers and you just allow your body to move freely. Um, so it's it's a, great, a great way to increase your reflexes and uh, somewhat of a meditative, meditative practice as well. So some techniques I use to get into a flow state of course, there's a little meditative aspect where you need to clear the mind. Um, but also, there's just this connection with the moment you need to do. Um, and yeah, other than that, you can do different types of exercises. I like to use balls or sticks or my favorite, go around in the, in the tree and move around, trying not to run into branches, going over and under them and just flowing around in the tree. Um, we'll teach more about that in that little course I've set up. Uh, maybe I'll hint a little more to it later. But uh, yeah, for now, just give a couple of examples. So the simplest thing you can do, whether it's sunny or anywhere you can be, you need a, maybe two or three feet vary around you and all you need to do grab an object it could be a ball a pen or a stick and you start playing with it doing movements around it bouncing it and try to learn new tricks so it's also a good exercise if you want to play but it helps get your mind and through that state and uh, if you do it often your mind will get into it much more easily whether it's the same exercise or you're trying out something new, but it's, it gets into that state where you're, you're not thinking, your thoughts are not getting in your way and you're just flowing, pushing through it and uh, nothing is quite stopping you. Um, so yeah, the little exercise I want you to do this week is uh, find a way to get into flow state. It could be some uh, wide movements. Oh, another thing that I would suggest 
And you do not need anything for this. You just relax your body, but allow it to move. A bit like an active meditation. So an example would be, you, know, you center back to your breath and allow your body somewhat like a dance, but without the music. So you can do a little something like this. And you, one thing I like to do is concentrate on the air, so the breath, but also the air flowing th over the arms, and uh, it really brings you into the moment, clears the mind, and helps you get into the flow state. So of course, if you do it with music, and add a little bit of dancing, and things like that, but uh, I really recommend you do it in silence, uh, you'll get much more benefits from it. Yeah, a bit like Tai Chi, right? Uh, tai Chi or Qigong. Uh, I think it's a bit of the idea to connect. You connect somewhat your breath with your movement and uh, really get into the moment. Um, so yeah, that's your challenge for this week. Find an exercise that brings you into flow state and uh, tell me about your experience. So you can private message me and uh, I'll give you some feedback. Um, let just check the chat, all right. Thanks, Patrick. Um, next, or do you have any questions about flow state? Any comments? Um, then we can move on. Uh, maybe I'll start with introducing the first three steps of this new program that I've created. Uh, so, yeah. It's about playing, it's about climbing trees and increasing your agility, getting to that flow state. Uh, we'll do all of that in the program and we'll create a strong bond between you and nature. It's called the monkey agility course. Uh, so every week for six weeks, we'll bring you a new module and uh, we'll also have three calls throughout the course where you can ask some questions, give some feedback and Maybe I can coach you a bit through the exercise, see what you have difficulties with. Uh, so I'll start with the first three parts of the course, which will be learning to warm up. We'll do a bit of like uh, this Tai Chi type exercises that I've done, but uh, more in depth about it, increasing your, your mobility. Uh, we'll also increase your joint strength and prepare you for client getting into the trees and climbing because um, next week after that we'll be teaching you how to fall so you need to have your joints conditioned properly um, and oh, also in the first week we're not giving you a specific program because that's one thing I disliked about uh, doing gymnastics or any sort of course is the rigid rigidity so we're giving you the base so that you can create your own uh, personal warm-up because people will need a longer warm-up especially if you're older or new to this. And uh, if you're already somewhat fit, well, you'll need a, you won't need a 20, 30 minute warm up, right? So we'll coach you through getting your, your perfect routine just for you. And then, like I said, we'll teach you how to fall. This is a really important skill to gain confidence in the trees. Um, so a couple of techniques we'll teach you, uh, like, learning to bend your knees properly and uh, having your feet at the right angle. It's, it's something you got to somewhat feel for yourself, uh, the right width for your feet. But uh, as I've touched a bit in my free intro course, uh, so how to land properly, how to catch yourself from a fall. So what to do if you slip off a branch. We'll go into three different techniques about that and a final technique on how to slide down the tree and use the tree trunk to catch your fall. So this is very important uh, to prevent injury. Number three, uh, we'll be teaching you how to identify weak spots in the tree, really get comfortable knowing, all right, this branch I can't step on because it's too dry or it's too small. So we'll teach you how to explore that 
and really find what's a weak spot in the tree for your own body weight. Some people, you know, uh, some people will be able to stand on branches this big, some people won't. And uh, no, they'll be mainly focused on branch skills. There's a couple of other things I'll teach about branches in that module. And uh, yeah, I'll continue with the other half after I've explained the, wait, did I skip the part? No, all right. So connecting with the nature, right? This is the whole idea of the program. You know, tree climbing is not necessarily only about fitness, but it's about developing a good relationship between you and nature. Um, as you might know, the trees, they put out essential oils that can be very calming and uh, really good for, for your health. There's also this other more spiritual aspect to it, and uh, I'll go a bit more in detail about that throughout the course. But yeah, there's some healing you can go through while spending time in the trees. Um, you somewhat share your energy with the tree, and uh, it gets, you can get to really euphoric states um, that can last for days after you've gone into the tree. There's like this, I'll teach a couple meditations you can do up there. Um, it's really, um, it brings you back to the moment, but it also brings you back to your nature and that's an awesome feeling that you won't get anywhere else. Um, like there's this aspect, like the Japanese do this a lot of Shinrin Yoku, where you go to the forest and you reconnect with your senses. And that can be prescribed in Japan as a medication. Uh, not so much around here, but uh, I'm trying to bring awareness to it, but really take it through to the next level by being up in the trees. Like I've tried both and being up in the trees, it's like 10 times more powerful. Um, So some of the benefits of connecting with nature, uh, there's this, uh, like things that can be prescribed for in Japan is depression, anxiety, uh, stress, many mental issues, but it's also great for, uh, they it boost this little gene or I'm not quite sure what the right, correct term is, but it's something that, uh, basically breaks down cancer cells. And uh, that, they found, is stimulated by the essential oils of the trees. And the reason, I think, that getting up the tree will 10x that is because when you're up in the tree, you're really surrounded by the tree's leaves and the essential oils, you absorb a lot more of them, you get close to the tree, right? And uh, also the, the oils, they tend to float up so the higher you are in the tree, the better concentration of essential oils you'll find. And also often the leaves are higher in the tree, so it's good to be up there. Um, you'll feel it, you'll smell it when you're up in the tree. The perfume of the tree is much more intense, and that means it's much more healing at the same time. Um, so yeah, maybe, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you spend some time in nature at least once a week? All right. uh, who goes there two to three times a week? Over three times a week? None? All right. I would recommend that you do it almost daily, um, but you can bet you can get benefits from doing it only once a month. But as I said, the more you do it, the more benefits you'll get. Mm. So that'll be your exercise for this week. And the final exercise is to get in nature. And uh, if you're not too scared, climb up a tree. You can check out my free video series that should give you the right basis for climbing it safely. 
But uh, if you really want to gain that confidence, we'll go through with the course. Uh, so maybe for those who missed it, I'll go through the six steps real quick. So number one, how to warm up properly. Number two, how to catch a fall. Number three is um, how to ident identify weak spots in, in the tree. And now we were at number four, we'll increase your balance. We'll teach you some different exercises you can do. I'll also show you how I made this little balance beam. You can see right here for under $20. So, yeah, you can make one for real cheap. It might not be as long as this one, but uh, it's a great and safe place to start if you're not too comfortable in the trees. Then number five, it's all about flow state. Um, we'll really get you to flow around the branches, increase your mobility, but mainly your speed and your agility. And then number six, we'll break through your your fears. Um, so we'll have two challenges in uh, week six. I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but uh, one of them, I, I guess I can tell, is to jump from one branch to the other, completely um, staying in the air without touching the tree and grabbing it back. We'll teach you how to do that, and uh, it'll be your final test. See if you We've done well through the course. So if you guys are interested, uh, I'll put the link there uh, in the chat. So the course normally would be $88, $88. Oh, I forgot, I'm not quite sure if I mentioned, but uh, I'll be mentoring you throughout the course with uh, three conferences like this. So we have, we'll be the whole group on there. I'll find the time that fits best for most people. And, uh, so we'll have one before the course, see if you have any questions. Then at the middle of the course, we'll be teaching you some exclusive uh, presentation there and answering your questions once again on the, because the course is divided in someone into two parts. There's the getting ready part and then really doing some more intense stuff after starting week four. So we'll, do a little quick briefing in between both. And at the end of the course, we'll do a final 30 minute call with the crew, make sure it all went well for you guys. And uh, yeah, so we'll do that. Plus the six video modules that are about uh, 10 minutes each with the, the teachings as I explained. So yeah, as I said, normally it's 88, 88. But for you guys, since you came to the webinar, I'm doing it 33.33. But since this is uh, something new, and uh, I really want to get some people out there, I'm bringing it down for the two first people that can join it. Um, so the first two will pay only 22.22. So it's really cheap for the value you'll be getting. Also, the first two people are getting a free personal call for 15 minutes. So if you want some other personal calls after that, um, you will have to buy the premium package, which is a little more expensive. If you want it, I still left the discount there for the webinar. So uh, there's a discount for the premium package where you'll get three 30-minute uh, personal call on top of the three group calls. Uh, so that's 56, uh, yeah, I believe it's 5678 instead of 123 and 45. Put some weird numbers out there, but that's because I like my weird numbers. Uh, so do you have any questions about the webinar or the course? We have about, 10 minutes left. All right, so Brandon asked, what kinds of trees are better to climb in? Um, as I mentioned earlier, wide poplars are really good if you can get them. I can't 
it's hard to tell like exactly what type of tree is better but if you can find one with uh, especially for beginners some branches that are uh, at least at reach uh, about this thick so you can have a good grasp, grasp on it and uh, fairly spaced out so if you can find branches at least like two or three feet spaced out that will be the perfect tree but uh, if you're just looking for climbing and doing some basic things most trees will do uh, of course there are some larger trees that will be hard to climb but there are some techniques for climbing some smaller trees that I can bring you up to the higher branches without too much of a difficulty um, so yeah but the best if you could, is if you can find some fairly low branches up in the trees that are solid enough. Watch out for dried branches as well. Uh, not only do they get in your way, but they're fragile and they tend to break. Um, like you want, it'll crack and break at the same time compared to a, a wet branch or a branch that still has life flowing through it. It'll crack before breaking so you can know like okay this branch is dangerous so yeah watch out for dry branches uh, best is if you can trim them off of the tree um, did that answer your question enough uh, all right a uh, question from Duncan uh, so what kind of info can you give to people who live in different locations around the world, different types of trees in different countries? So, yeah, as I mentioned, like the tree type doesn't really matter as long as you can find a tree with uh, branches you can climb on. Uh, of course, different type of trees, uh, sometimes you'll have to be creative with it. Some Trees are better for balance work. Some, thing, some trees are better for swinging from, from a branch to the other. But uh, I've done this little part. If you haven't seen my, my free video course, explain what the perfect tree looks like. And uh, you can try and find a tree that looks the best for you. Um, but uh, I'd say f more, unless you live in a desert, you should be able to find a, a good tree. Mm. Can you teach me to get to the top of the tree? I'm sorry? Can you teach me to get to the top of the tree? Yes, of course. Uh, it's part of the course. Um, I wasn't going to mention it, but in the final week, uh, that's one of the challenges is to get as high as you can in the tree. Um, my, my techniques will bring you up there safely and uh, could even coach you to find a good tree for you since you're a little shorter, you'll need some closer branches, uh, but it's feasible. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Brandon asked if I wanted to come climb this tree in his backyard. He lives a couple of minutes away from here. So I might do that after the call, but uh, see if you guys have any, have any questions or comments before I leave. Oh, yeah, I'm not saying the, the sale for this webinar. I'll leave it open for about 12 hours. What time is it? Well, when I wake up tomorrow morning, uh, I'll close it. So you have until then. And uh, so yeah, the first two people, it's 22, 22, and then it's 33, 33. So I'll post the link one last time in case you missed it. Oh, I posted it privately. Everyone. There you go.
You also might want to check out my free video course if you haven't already. Uh, but yeah. No questions, no comments? Yeah, I've got a question. So yeah. I was just wondering if we have sent a picture of a tree that we we're looking at climbing, would you be able to give some feedback on it? Yes, that would be perfect, actually. Um, I'd love to help you with that. Awesome. Sounds great. No problem. So yeah, I'll leave the deal open for about 15 hours. When I wake up tomorrow morning, I'll close it. So if you want to check it out, I'll see you there. Not maybe see you another in another webinar. Peace and uh, happy climbing.